This is your ultimate guide to unlocking the Borealis camo in Modern Warfare Zombies fast. We're going to go over every step in the process from weapon leveling, farming locations, all the bosses and where to find them. And it's all going to be timestamped down below. That way you can quickly find what you're looking for. And if you want to see any more complete guides like this in the future, make sure to unlock that subscribe button. So starting off, let's quickly explain how this camo system works. Step one is to level up a weapon. As you level up the weapon, you're going to unlock all four of the base camo challenges. For this weapon, we unlock the first one at level two, the second challenge at level nine, the third challenge at level 14 then when we max out the weapon we unlock the last one you have to max out the weapon and complete all four of these base challenges once that's done you're going to unlock a mastery challenge for the weapon if you complete this you're going to get the golden enigma camo now we have to go back and do step one for a certain amount of weapons in a class so for the pistols we've got to get the golden enigma camo on four of them then we can move on to step two which is the zircon scale camo this is a single challenge that has to be done individually for each weapon so once you get all the weapons golden enigma you now have to go back and do the zircon scale challenge individually for all the weapons now for step three you have to have the zircon scale camo on 36 different weapons meaning you have to go back and complete step two 36 different times Doing that is going to unlock you a new mastery challenge. And once again, you're going to have to go back and do this new mastery challenge on each weapon individually. Doing so is going to get you the Serpentonite camo. Then when you get that camo on 36 different weapons, you're going to get Borealis and there's no more challenges. You're going to get the camo immediately. You'll have access to it on all 36 weapons you just completed. I know if you're new to this camo system, it seems really confusing at first glance. But if you go in game and start grinding a few weapons, it's all going to click. It's a really simple system. It just sounds confusing. Next, let's talk about the weapon weapons you have to use to get this camo and what weapons you're able to skip this is a modern warfare 3 only weapon camo meaning if you are using a modern warfare 2 weapon you're not making progress towards getting this modern warfare 2 weapons in zombies have their own mastery camo so if you're trying to unlock borealis make sure you're using a modern warfare 3 weapon you can tell them apart because in the menu modern warfare 3 weapons have this logo at the top whereas modern warfare 2 weapons have this logo now when it comes to the weapons you're able to skip right now you can't skip any of the weapons if you're watching this before season one you have to do all 36 weapons to get the camo however in the future you're going to be able to skip whatever weapons you want every time they add a dlc weapon into this game you can do that dlc weapon in place of one of the base weapons so once we get three dlc weapons in the game i highly recommend skipping the sniper rifles the longbow is pretty good but the cat amr and the kv inhibitor are pretty bad so if we get three dlc weapons in this game you just don't even have to do the sniper rifles and you're still going to be able to get the borealis camo most of the time they add dlc weapons their ars their smgs and both of these categories are extremely easy to grind so if you're watching this in the future past season one uh, i recommend doing a bunch of the dlc ars and dlc smgs instead of the slower shooting things like the marksman rifles and the sniper rifles now before you start your grind there's a few things i highly recommend you do the first one is unlocking your second insured slot this is going to allow you to spawn into game with two customized weapons so now you can work on two different weapons at the same time and this is going to speed up the whole process a ton getting your second insured slot is a little bit of a time sink because to do this you have to complete the entirety of act one so you got to go in game do this mission and do all these missions until you get all the way to the bottom then you have to do the story mission and once you complete this you'll now have two insured slots like i said this is going to take a little bit of time but most of these missions involve getting kills or doing other stuff you're already going to be doing because of your camo grind so just start doing the missions and grind the first weapon you want to start on while you're doing these and that way at the end of this you'll probably have a couple gold weapons and you'll have your second insured slot the other thing i recommend you do before you start hardcore grinding or while you're camo grinding is to farm some of the schematics these are game changing when it comes to the camo grind because these allow you to spawn in game right off the bat with an item. So if we were to spawn with this and we put this in our backpack, we're now going to spawn in game with an epic aether tool. And that's one of the camo challenges is to get kills with a weapon that's rare or higher. Uh, there is a cooldown. So now we got to wait 10 hours for it. But some of these don't have that high of a cooldown. So we put on the ammo mod one. That's another thing that you're going to need for some camo challenges. We just got to wait three hours and we'll get this back. Not every weapon has the same camo challenges. So by the time we get to the next weapon that needs dead wire, we're probably going to have this ready to go again. And a lot of these are going to help you out. The ones that upgrade the rarity of your weapon, that's one that you're going to need. The one for pack-a-punch crystals, allowing you to pack-a-punch right when you start the game is really going to be helpful. I do have a full guide that breaks down all of the different schematics and how you get them and the best way to go about farming them. And you can do this 
while you're grinding your first few weapons. So when you first start out with the grind, use those weapons while you're farming out these schematics. This camel grind is gonna be safer and more enjoyable if you do it alongside other people. So if you're looking for people to play with, I am gonna leave my Discord link down below. There's always people looking to grind and play with other people and zombies. And it's gonna make it where if you go down, you're gonna have someone else in your game to be able to revive you. But if you are playing with someone else, the way the camo system and XP system works in this game, as long as everyone puts a bullet into a zombie, it doesn't matter how he dies, everyone's gonna get camo progress and XP progress for it. So if you're farming with someone else, make sure you try to put at least one bullet into each zombie, that way you're maximizing your farming. Now, when it comes to actually grinding out the weapons, the first thing you have to do is level them up. But before you go in game to do that, I recommend going to the camo menu and looking at the four different camo challenges for the weapon and what level you unlock them. That way, while you're leveling it up in game, you can immediately start working on those challenges. So you're doubling up and it's gonna make the whole process a lot faster. This is the class setup I recommend. Obviously for the insured slot, you want the weapon you're trying to level up and if you have two insured slots put a second weapon you're also trying to level up so you got both of them here for the tactical you want to be using decoy grenades these are the best in the game we're not going to be using anything else throughout this entire video even if you find a monkey bomb in game i recommend sticking with the decoy grenade they're just better uh, for the lethal we have the throwing knife this is really good at killing dogs and other zombies that are close range then for the field upgrade, when it comes to weapon XP grinding, we're gonna be using Energy Mine. Later, when we go for other camos, we're gonna change this, but if you're just trying to get XP, Energy Mine's the way to go. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about a lot of different contracts and how to farm them. Something you need to know for this is not all the contracts spawn in right away. When you first load into game, you're gonna see some contracts spawn in, but over the first one to two minutes, more and more are gonna pop into the game. And throughout the entire span of the game, as people pick up other contracts, new ones are going to spawn in. So if you don't see the contract you're looking for right away, it might be there in about a minute or two. The fastest way to get weapon XP in zombies is to kill zombies. So any method you can find to kill a lot of zombies quickly is going to be what you want to do. There's two different contracts where you can achieve this. The best one being Outlast. And if your only goal is to get weapon XP, an Outlast contract in the tier one zone is going to be best. Start the contract, head to the marked location, find the PND in the building, activate it. Now wait for the progress bar on the left-hand side of the screen to go above 50%. Now that it's a above 50% leave the building and it's going to start going back down and now you're going to have unlimited zombie spawns in this area and they always spawn in the same spot so you want to try to locate the spawn point so here yep here's the spawn point so now we can just keep farming these zombies as they spawn in and these zombies are going to spawn infinitely like this for the rest of the game the only way you can mess up this farm is if you go back inside the outlast contract and complete it so you got to make sure you or none of your teammates go back inside but besides that now you just farm zombies get xp Every single time you get XP, no matter how you got the kill, it's going to go towards the weapon in your hand. So while you're loading, or if there's more zombies than you're able to kill, throw down the energy mine. This is going to kill more zombies, and that XP is going to go towards the weapon that you have. Uh, same thing, if you find throwing knives as you're throwing these when you have to reload, this XP is going towards the weapon I have. So anything you can do to get more kills per minute is going to help you out. Unfortunately, there is a weapon XP cap per game in zombies. So after you get over 750 kills, you're going to start getting a lot less XP per kill. Unfortunately, right now, there's no way to see how many kills you have in game, but you can get a rough estimate. Once you get 12,000 points, that's when you've roughly got 750 kills. So we're going to farm in this location till we have 12,000 points. And once we get 12,000 points, we're going to finish the contract, exfil, and then rinse and repeat. There we go, 12,000 points. So we're going to head back into the zone, finish off the contract. Now, keep in mind, using points to see how many kills you have only works if you don't spend your points. If we go and spend our points, that counter is not going to be accurate anymore. And now we exfil. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to have the opportunity to farm an Outlast contract in every match you play. They're kind of rare to spawn in, and this is everyone's favorite method of farming, so they get taken pretty quickly. If you're not able to get an Outlast contract, the next best one is the Spore Control contract. Pick it up, head to the marked location, open the toolbox, pick up the inhibitors. Now we want to throw the inhibitors on each one of the spores, and we don't want to destroy the spores. We're just throwing the inhibitors on them. And once we've thrown down all the inhibitors, you want to go to the area Area that has the most amount of spores so since this area has three different spores we're gonna sit here because each spore is now gonna be spawning zombies so we can just sit here and continuously farm them as they spawn in however while farming the zombies make sure not to accidentally shoot the spores because you can do damage and once you've blown them up they're gone they don't come back you'll have to do another contract but as 
long as you keep at least one spore alive, this will never stop spawning zombies. So you can sit here and farm until the game ends. And the more spores you keep alive, the more zombie spawns there's gonna be. Now, once again, keep in mind, if you're doing this specifically to farm weapon XP, once you get around 12,000 points, you're gonna start getting less XP per kill. Now let's go over the base camo challenges for these weapons. And you wanna start doing these while you're leveling the weapon up. Cause a lot of these can be done at the same exact time. That way you're making double progression. The first camo challenge for every weapon in zombies is just to get 250 kills. This is like the free spot in bingo. You're gonna finish this no matter what while you're leveling the weapon up and you're doing the other four challenges. So I wouldn't even worry about this, but the easiest way to get kills in zombies is the two methods we just showed. You wanna farm an outlast contract or if that's not available, you wanna do the spore contract. Now, after the first camo challenge, each weapon is gonna have three additional challenges. You can actually work on all three of these at the same time. They don't have to be done in order. The only requirement to start working on the challenge is to get the gun a high enough level to unlock that certain challenge. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can hover over the challenge. It's gonna tell you what level you need to be to unlock it. And it's even gonna tell you what the challenge is before you start leveling up the weapon. That way you can take a look at what you need to do before you start the game. So once you hit that level mid game, you can immediately start working on the challenge. The next three camo challenges are gonna be different for every weapon. There's gonna be one of 24 possibilities it can be. So your grind for getting each weapon gold on your road to Borealis is gonna be a little bit different. One of the possible camo challenges you can get is to get 250 kills with full attachments. For this, you just gotta make sure all five attachment slots are filled. So we can see here, we've got five attachments on. It says five out of five here. If we go in game and get a kill, it's gonna make progress on that. The best way to get kills, once again, outlast and spore contracts. Another possible challenge is to get 250 kills with four perks active. If you have all your perk cola schematics, you can just select four of these, spawn in, drink them right away, and you just have to get 250 kills. But if you don't have these, just go to the Wonder Fizz machine in the tier three zone, buy four perks. And if you're scared of the tier three zone, you can actually see icons for perk cans around the map. And once you have four perks active, meaning you can see them on the bottom of your screen, once you get 250 kills, this challenge is going to be completed. It doesn't have to be in one game. It's super simple. Once again, you can go to different contracts to farm the kills. The next possible challenge is to get 250 kills with the weapon at rare, higher rarity. This means the weapon has to be upgraded to at least the blue tier. This is really easy if you have the schematics. So if you have the rare ether tool, you can spawn in with this, immediately turn your weapon blue. Same thing if you have the epic one, you can immediately turn your weapon to the purple rarity. So all the kills you get that game are going to count. If not, you've got to find these wrenches in game. You can get these by completing contracts. They're one of the items that can spawn in the reward rift. You're also guaranteed to get one by destroying a harvester orb. That's that little purple orb that you sometimes see floating around the map. If you shoot it enough, it's going to drop one of these tools. However, you have to be at least in the tier two zone for it to drop a rare or higher tool. So I recommend to save some of these upgrade tools in your stash because unlike Pack-A-Punch and Perks, there's no 100% guaranteed way to get these every match. There's RNG involved with this and not every weapon's gonna need this. So make sure you're saving the tools for the weapons that you're gonna need to do that for one of the camo challenges. That way you're not trying to go in game and look for these tools. You've got them on deck ready to go. Another possible challenge is to get 250 kills while in tax stance. This is simple, but does confuse some people because this is a new mechanic that was added into Modern Warfare 3. If you're on mouse and keyboard to tack stance, you have to ADS and press V. That's what it is by default. It's gonna turn your gun sideways. If you're on controller, you have to ADS and press down on D-pad. If you've changed your settings, it might be different, but that's what it is by default. Doing this is gonna turn your gun sideways and it's gonna be almost like an ADS slash hit fire. Now you have to press the ADS button shoot and kill zombies and every kill you get while doing this is going to count as a tax stance kill so do that for 250 kills and you'll have the camo unlocked the next possible camo challenge is to get 200 critical kills these are headshots so you want to aim for the head and there's one thing you can do to make this so much easier that's to get the deadshot daiquiri perk this is going to make it where you're doing more damage when you hit zombies in the head but if you're playing on controller when you aim down sights it's now gonna make it where the aim assist automatically targets the zombie's head instead of their body. And if you buy the Deadshot Daiquiri perk and just constantly ADS, you'll get these 200 critical kills extremely quickly. Another possible camo challenge is to get 250 hit fire kills. Super simple, kill enemies, don't ADS. If you wanna make it a little bit easier, you can put on attachments that increase your hit fire spread. This is mainly gonna be the under barrels and laser sights. The next camo challenge is to get 250 point blank kills for this, you pretty much have to put the barrel of the gun right to the zombie's face and kill them. That's what's going to count for these, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Normally, when you're fighting zombies, you don't want to be that close to them because the only way they can actually hurt you is when you're right next to them. 
Uh, to make this a little bit easier, you can use decoys, throw these down. All the zombies are going to hoard around them. You can proceed to go zombie by zombie, taking them all out point blank. And the good thing about decoys is, is you actually can refill these at the ammo resupply stations. So if you see this icon on the map, go to it and interact with it. You'll get three back. Now, this isn't a hard challenge. It's just a little bit annoying. And you might go down a couple of times because getting up close to zombies can be dangerous. So maybe get Juggernaut if you are struggling with this challenge. The next possible challenge is to get 300 Pack-a-Punch kills, Pack-a-Punch your weapon, get 300 kills. If you have a Pack-a-Punch crystal to spawn in the game with, great, you can start working on the challenge right away. If not, you're going to have to get points, go to the Pack-a-Punch machine, and Pack-a-Punch your weapon. The next possible challenge is to get 100 kills in a single match, load into game, and get 100 kills. The next camo challenge is a little bit more complicated. For this, you have to get 100 kills shortly after using a field upgrade. The field upgrade I recommend for this is Ether Shroud. This recharges really quickly, so we can use it over and over. So first, you want to charge up your field upgrade by killing zombies. Once it's charged, you want to hoard up a bunch of zombies at a farming location. If you have a decoy, throw it down because it's going to help. Now you want to activate your field upgrade, but while it's activating, you can start shooting immediately and just keep shooting as many zombies as you can. Now you want to rinse and repeat this process until you get 100 kills. It shouldn't take that long, but it can take longer depending on the weapon you're using obviously if you're using a sniper rifle this might take a little bit longer than what it would be if you're using an smg the next camo challenge is to kill 100 enemies affected by your tactical for this you definitely want to be using decoy grenades throw a decoy grenade down allow the zombies to get attracted to it and then just proceed to mow them down and once you run out of decoys you just want to head to one of the ammo crates around the map interact with it you're going to get three more decoys rinse and repeat till you get 100 kills this one's super easy. It helps a lot if you're able to find a farming contract near an ammo resupply. We got pretty lucky here, so we've got the spore contract. Then we've also got an ammo cache right next to it, so we can just keep going back and forth. Unfortunately, you might get a little bit more unlucky in your farming spot. Might be a little ways away from an ammo cache. And if it's really far away, you might just want to find a different contract that has one near it so you can get it done quicker. But using these right here, you can refill ammo unlimited times. The only downside is there is a 60 second cooldown, but that's really not that long. For the next camo challenge, we've got to get 20 consecutive kills without taking damage. So you want to go to one of the farming spots and you want to make sure you're kind of on the outskirts of it so you don't have zombies spawning behind you. And now we're just going to kill 20 zombies without taking damage. And this one's a little bit weird because there is a metal that pops up when you get 20, but I think it's bugged in game right now. A jackrabbit's supposed to be 20, but you can see you've got to get 30 for it. And with this, you have to reset it. You can't do these in a row. If you just keep killing zombies, it's only going to count for one. So whenever you see that jackrabbit metal, walk into a zombie, let him hit you, and now rinse and repeat. Do the process again, get 30 kills in a row without taking damage. I'm not quite sure if you need 20 or 30, but I like to see the metal pop up. So I go ahead and just do 30. That way I'm making sure I get progress because you don't want to reset it early. And I'm, I'm a little bit too lazy to count. If you want to, you can just count out the 20 kills as you get it. And it's going to be a little bit more efficient, but you're probably going to be doing other camo challenges while you're doing this one. So I just like to wait for the Jackrabbit metal, get hit, and then start the process over. Do it a total of 10 times, then the camo should unlock. Next, we've got to get five kills without releasing the trigger 20 times. Go to a farming location, hoard up a bunch of zombies. You can throw down a decoy if you want to, but depending on the weapon you're using, you're probably not going to need to. Then we're going to light into the zombies, and we're going to get at least five kills. So that should be about five. Wait a few seconds. You don't want to do it again right after, because almost all the medals in this game and all the challenges, if you do it immediately after, it's not going to count progression. Probably want to reload. That way, you know, you've got full ammo again, and we're going to mow down five more zombies. There's a few things you can do to make this challenge easier. Obviously, you want to put on the biggest mag you have. That way, you have more bullets and you have more opportunities to get the five kills before you have to reload. Um, you just want to do this 20 times. The bigger the magazine you have on the weapon, the easier this challenge is going to be. The next four camo challenges require you to put a specific ammo mod on your weapon. The first one being get 250 kills with electric damage. For this, you have to put on the dead wire ammo mod on your weapon, get 250 kills. The next one being get 250 kills with frost blast damage. This is the cryo freeze ammo mod that has to be equipped to your weapon and you just have to get 250 kills with the weapon when that's equipped. The third one being get 250 kills with fire damage. This is the napalm burst ammo mod. So slap that on your weapon. 
get 250 kills the fourth one being get 250 kills with toxic damage that's the brain rot ammo mod so once again put the brain rot ammo mod on your weapon get 250 kills and you'll get this camo this is going to be super simple if you have the schematics for these ammo mods you're going to be able to spawn right into game put it on your weapon and start right off the bat and these cool down every three hours but if you don't have the schematics and you don't have any of these saved in your backpack you're going to have to get these in game and there's a few different ways you can farm these the first one being an ether nest head inside the location and it is going to be filled with gas so if you don't have a gas mask you're going to be taking constant damage but it is still able to be done without a gas mask you just occasionally need to head back outside heal back up and then go back in it's really not going to be that big of a deal if you don't have one once you're inside you're going to look for these these are cysts you want to destroy all of these there we go once you pop all the cysts you're going to get activity complete this is going to remove all of the gas and it's going to allow you to open the chest in here these have a very high chance of spawning ammo mods as you can see we got a napalm burst a dead wire and a cryo freeze from just this one chest so you're really quickly going to be able to find the ammo mod you need and if you wanted to you could take these ammo mods and stow these for another game the next way to get easy ammo mods is from an infested stronghold these are pretty much going to be the same thing as the aether nest they're just much bigger and they spawn mimics but you go inside and you destroy all of the cysts. But there's going to be a lot more in here. If you have the death perception perk, it's going to allow you to see all of the cysts through the walls. Once complete, this area is going to have quite a few different chests you can open. And once again, these have a really high chance of spawning ammo mods. The next camo challenge is one that I see a lot of people struggle with after the exfil nerf. Get 10 kills within 5 seconds 10 times. For this one, I highly recommend the spore contract because you can get large hordes of zombies. So go ahead, activate all of the spores, hoard up the zombies, and you can see there's more than 10 zombies here. So we're just going to go ahead, slay them all. And as soon as we see a slaughter metal, there we go. That's 10 kills rapidly. Now we're just going to hoard the zombies back up. So we're not going to kill the rest. And we're just going to kind of train around until we get a big cluster again. There we go. That's more than 10 zombies. Lay into the horde, wait for the metal to pop up. There we go. There's the slaughter metal again. And this is easy to farm. Now that we've got this set up, we're just going to do this 10 times and we'll have the camo unlocked. The next camo challenge is surprisingly only for the KV inhibitor. For this, you have to get three kills with one shot 10 times. I highly recommend to at least pack a punch it to tier one. That's going to make this easier. We're going to do the spore contract, place the inhibitor on all the spores. Then we're going to get a giant horde of zombies. Once you've got the zombies hoarded up, I found the easiest way to do this is to find some sort of wall and have them go across the wall like this. Then we're going to shoot a shot into the horde. It only showed that we got two kills. That's because it doesn't show you when you get more than two kills on this. It's only ever going to show two, but we did manage to get three there. So we go ahead, shoot in there again. As you can see, only showed two zombie kills, but we got more than that. You can also use a decoy. So we're going to throw a decoy into the middle of the zombies here. And then we're going to proceed to find an area where they're all lined up together. like Just like that. Go ahead, shoot it. So that should have been more than three. And it kind of sucks that you can't really tell exactly when you're getting more than three since only two of them pop up in the kill feed. But most of what we've been getting is over three. Just going back and forth at one of these spore objectives, you're going to be able to get this relatively quickly. Like that right there was definitely more than three. And we're just training backwards. Shoot it again. That was more than three. But the thing is, if you mess up and you only kill two of them, uh, just continuously hoard the zombies because they're going to keep spawning in. You have infinite tries at this. All right, right there. Definitely more than three. And that's why I recommend the spore contract because even though the zombies don't spawn as quickly because they're more spread out, you can get more than 10 zombies. With the Outlast contract, you're only going to get seven zombies at a time. So the spore objective is way better for this challenge. And luckily, you've only got to get 10 of them and doing this 10 times is not going to be that hard. The next set of camo challenges require you to take down a certain type of enemy. The first one being 50 Hellhounds. These are the fire dogs. You can get a bunch of these when you're farming an Outlast contract because not only is that contract going to spawn unlimited zombies, it's also going to spawn unlimited hellhounds. The next possible camo challenge is to kill 50 mercenaries. These are the bots that shoot back at you in the zombies mode. The best way to get these is by going to mercenary strongholds. However, you need a key card to get in here. You can get a free one by going to a mercenary camp. Once here, go ahead and take out all the mercenaries. In the middle of the camp, you're going to find a crate. In here, you're going to find the stronghold key card. If you don't have a mercenary camp, near you 
you can buy a key card at a buy station. They're going to be $2,000 each. Now let's head to the stronghold. We can open the front door with the key card and there's going to be a bunch of mercenaries inside. Be careful because there's also going to be riot shielders in here and the riot shielders are going to be a little bit tough to take out. There's also the shock troopers. These guys have a lot of health. So be careful when you're fighting with these guys, but there we go. After you've taken out all of the mercenaries, you can start the safe. Starting the safe is going to cause a reinforcement helicopter to spawn in. These are going to drop mercenaries out of them and you can kill them as they spawn in. Once the safe's done drilling, the mercenaries are going to stop spawning. So you're going to have to do this whole progress over again until you get your 50 mercenary kills. The next camo challenge is 10 disciple kills. This is another one I see a lot of people struggling with. We're going to do an Outlast contract for this, but we're going to do a Tier 2 Outlast contract. Prior to this point, we've been doing all Tier 1 contracts, but the Tier 2 Outlast contract can spawn a lot of Disciples with it. So the process for this is the same. We're going to pick up the contract, head to the Mark location, activate the PD. Now we want to get the progress bar for the contract above 60%, but we don't want to take it all the way to 80%. So once you get it above 60%, we're going to head outside of the zone because above 60%, this is when bosses are going to start spawning. Now, since this contract's in the tier two zone, these zombies are going to be faster and they're going to have a lot more health. So you want to upgrade your weapon more than you normally would for farming contracts. So there's our first boss. It's a mangler. We're looking for disciples. There we go. There's our first disciple. Now, when I'm farming outlast contracts for bosses, I try to take this progress bar back up to 30% and have it go back down. I feel like this makes more bosses spawn. So we're going to go back to 30% and we're going to head back out. And there we go. As soon as we got to 30%, a mangler spawned in. Now we're going to let it go back down below 30 and then bring it back up to 30. Oh, and that made a disciple spawn. Take him out. Oh, and it made another disciple spawn. Take him out as well. Now it's below 30%. So we're going to go back into the outlast contract. Let it go back up to 30. Another disciple. So farming here, we've already got 10 disciple kills and we haven't even been here for this long. There's other ways to farm disciples, but I don't recommend them. You can do the HVT contracts, but those are going to be even stronger disciples and picking up an HVT contract is only going to get you one disciple if it gets you a disciple at all. Whereas this contract is going to spawn them over and over again. You can also go to tier two areas and walk around, but once again, you're not guaranteed to get disciple spawns. The tier two escort contract can also spawn disciples, but it seems to be less often. Your best bet to get the Disciple kills extremely quickly is a Tier 2 Outlast contract, and this is going to spawn them like crazy. Now, if you're not able to find a Tier 2 Outlast mission, the next best thing is going to be a Tier 2 Escort mission. While you're doing this mission, it can spawn Disciples, but it's not going to be as many Disciples as the Outlast contract, and this contract doesn't last forever. There's no way to infinitely farm it. You just got to keep riding the escort and eventually you're going to get to the end and the mission's going to finish. So you'll have to find another escort mission and just rinse and repeat over and over again. So finding an outlast contract in the tier two zone should be your first choice if possible. The next camo challenge is to get 10 mangler kills. Everything we just said about farming disciples is the same for manglers. The only difference is that you can actually get manglers from the tier one contract of escorts. So if you want to do tier one contracts, you can keep doing tier one escorts over and over again. But doing a tier two outlast contract is going to spawn in a lot of manglers as you saw while we were farming those disciples. It was spawning in a ton of disciples and a ton of manglers. The last base camo challenge is to get five mimic kills. And this one's super simple. For this, you want to head to an infested stronghold. Now you can do this in either a tier one or a tier two zone. I personally recommend the tier two zone because these infected strongholds are going to have more mimics and you're guaranteed to get a mimic. Whereas in the tier one zone, there's rare chances where sometimes you're not even going to get one of them. But since we're in a tier two zone, we should be guaranteed to get one. All we're going to do is run inside the zone and just run around till the mimic spawns. You don't have to break any of the spores or kill any of the zombies. Oh, there we go. There's our first mimic. Take him out. Oh, there we go. There's another mimic. They can be disguised as chests. That one was a chest on the ground and we walked by it. It turned into a mimic. Now that we've got two from this infested stronghold, we can just open our map and find another one nearby. Oh, yep. There's one right here across the street and we're going to go to this one. This is by far the quickest way to get the mimic kills. You can do HVT contracts, but once again, it's not guaranteed a mimic and those mimics are going to be harder to kill. These are super simple. You just run in, get the mimics to spawn, kill them and you're done. Oh, but unfortunately, this one looks like someone's already been here. But what's the chances they killed the mimic? Oh, yeah, there's one of them. OK, well, I think the other one from this location was killed, but no big deal. We'll just find another one on the map and go there. These things spawn all over the place. Oh, OK, well, there's one that was quick. Oh, 
And there's the other one. That's both of them. Ooh. Oh, and that was five mimics. So getting the five mimics takes no time whatsoever. Just go to a few infested strongholds and you'll get it done right away. Here's some additional tips and tricks for some of the different weapon classes. For the rocket launchers, you want to get PhD because you don't want to explode the rocket and hurt yourself. But for melee weapons, you also want to get PhD as well because PhD is going to stop you from taking fire damage from the dogs. And if you're using a melee weapon, you can't really avoid knifing the dogs because the fire is going to get around you. So when you're doing the different melee weapons, get PhD for that. That's going to help you out. Then if you're using the pistols, I highly recommend using the Kimbo attachment once you get it because the Akimbo pistols are the best way to rock the pistols and they're very good once you put that attachment on. Now that you've got the weapon max rank and finished all four of the base challenges, you can start working on the mastery. The first one being Golden Enigma, and this is gonna be the same for every weapon in Zombie. So this isn't gonna change, doesn't matter what weapon you're doing. This is the challenge for all of them. To do this, you have to get 100 kills in a match, then successfully exfil. That's all. And all of the kills you got prior are going to count. So let's say you just got done getting 250 kills while having four perks active. So you've already got 100 kills in your current match getting this weapon. Now you can just exfil. You don't have to get an additional 100 more as long as you have the weapon with you. You can't drop the weapon. You have to keep it in your inventory. So if you're starting a new game, go in, farm 100 kills, then exfil and you're going to unlock it. But if you just finished, you know, getting a bunch of kills at a farming location and you're still in the match, you can just go and exfil with it in your inventory and it should unlock this camo. This one is a little bit buggy and some people are still having issues with it, but hopefully all of the issues get fixed in the future. But if you are having issues with the weapon, try to just go in game, get 100 kills, don't upgrade it, don't do anything, then exfil with it in your hands. But hopefully by the time you're watching this, you shouldn't have to do that anymore. Once you get the Golden Enigma camo, the next step is the Zircon Scale camo. But before you can even start working on this weapon challenge, you have to get a certain amount of weapons Golden Enigma in that class. So for ARs, you have to get six Golden Enigma ARs before you can even start working on this challenge. And it's however many weapons were in that category at launch. So there are six ARs at launch in this game. So you have to get six ARs. But once a DLC one comes, you can skip one of the other base ones and do the DLC one instead. And this challenge is going to be the same for all weapons. Once you get all the weapons Golden Enigma in that category, it is just going to be 300 Pack-a-Punch kills for that weapon, and that's going to get the Zircon scale. And like I said earlier in this video, this has to be done individually for each weapon. So once we do it for this AR right here, we then have to select a different AR and do the same camo challenge. So for the Zircon scale camo challenge, you're going to have to get 300 Pack-a-Punch kills for every single weapon to get them all done. And once you do this and unlock the Zircon scale camo on 36 different Modern Warfare 3 weapons, you can start to grind the Serpentinite camo. This challenge, just like the Zircon Scale Challenge, is going to be the same for every weapon. No weapon is going to have a different set of challenges. For all weapons to get the Serpent Tonight camo, you have to get 10 Special or Elite Zombie Kills. These are Mimics, Manglers, Abominations, Disciples. Any sort of boss you can find around the map is going to count for this. The quickest way to farm this is an Outlast Tier 2 Contract. And like you saw earlier in this video, we were able to get like 10 bosses in under 5 minutes. So if you spawn into game with two different insured weapons, you'll be able to finish both of those weapons. And then after you finish that, you can hit the box, get another Modern Warfare 3 weapon, try to look at the different wall weapons around the map. And as long as you can get your hands on a different Modern Warfare 3 weapon, you can finish like five or 10 weapons in a single game. But once you get towards the end of this grind, because you are going to have to do this for all 36 of them, it's going to slow down and you're pretty much only going to be spawning in with your two insured weapons and finishing those because... Once you finish more and more of them, it's going to be harder to get a weapon you haven't finished out of the box and out of the wall. But this part of the grind, you're on the home stretch. You're going to finish this really quickly. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get a tier two outlast contract every game you play. So if you don't have a tier two outlast contract available, you don't want to do a tier one outlast contract because these don't spawn bosses. You want to do an escort contract and this can be in tier one or tier two In tier two, you are going to get more bosses. In tier one, you're just going to get manglers. But if you do it in tier two, you're going to get manglers and disciples. And overall, you're going to get more of these bosses. The issue with the escort contracts is they're not infinite. You can't infinitely farm it. You're going to go through, finish the contract, and you have to pick up another one. You can also do the infested strongholds. These are going to spawn mimics. In tier one, you're only going to get one mimic. In tier two, you're going to get guaranteed two mimics. And you can run through these pretty quickly, getting a lot of mimics. So the Outlast tier two contract should always be your first choice. But if you don't have one of those available, those are some other options. Another tip I can give you for this, some weapons are not good for taking down bosses. 
The cat sniper rifle, I really struggled with this even after pack-a-punching it. It was just weak when it came to bosses. If you're in this scenario, you might want to weaken the bosses with a different weapon you have with you. And then as soon as they're weak and they're only one or two shots away from dying, switch back to the weapon that you have to get the boss kills with. So that's a strategy for that. But once you do this for 36 different weapons and you unlock the Serpentonite camo, you're going to get Borealis. You are done. You can now enjoy the game or you could do one of the other grinds. There's now the Bioluminescence camo. You can grind for the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. There's the Ultra Mastery for the Modern Warfare 3 weapons. There's the Ultra Mastery for the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. So unlocking the Borealis camo is just the start of the grind in Modern Warfare Zombies. If you want to see guides for the Ultra Mastery, Bioluminescence, or anything like that, let me know down in the comments below and make sure to unlock that sub button. I really did try to make this guide as helpful as possible. I try to cover any questions people would have, fully go in detail with everything, and timestamp it. That way you can find exactly what you're looking for. But if you know any additional tips that can help people out make sure to leave them down in the comments below and if you have any suggestions for future guides like this because this was a big project this took a long time to make uh let me know in the comments below because i will be reading those but with that guys i think i am done here i think i'm gonna go get some rest thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one have a great day peace lego unlocked he's lego unlocked it's going to unlock all these camels